Let's talk about one of the most misunderstood tax deductions out there called the home office deduction. This deduction is great for business owners who work from their home or use a part of their home in connection with business activities. You can also use this strategy if you're a W-2 employee, if you do my side hustle tax strategy that I talk a lot about, where you have a business on the side that you actively participate in a way that can allow you to claim some tax deductions. If you're just a pure W-2 employee, you can't use this deduction anymore. You're not allowed to claim deductions even if you do work from home and have an office space in your home that you use for your job. So this strategy is really for business owners and anyone who uses any part of their home in connection with their business. So let's dive right into the deduction itself. There are two main requirements here to claim the home office deduction. What we really want to do and the goal of setting this up in a way we can maximize our home office deduction is to make your home your primary place of work. It doesn't have to be your only place of work, but it needs to be your primary place of work. So I know a lot of business owners and myself at times, you know, when I was managing my businesses, I had a space in like a WeWork virtual or a virtual office or anything like that, where it's somewhere else that you might go to occasionally, you know, to do, to do work for your business. That doesn't disallow you from claiming this deduction. You just need your office space at your home to be your primary place where you're doing the most work. So the two key requirements for claiming the deduction are one, that your office in your, or your space in your home must be used exclusively and regularly for business purposes. So this means you need to be using that space frequently. You can't just kind of use your office at your home every now and then, like once a week or once every three weeks, you know, you stop in and do some work there. You've got to use it regularly. So, you know, every day or, you know, every other day, you want to be frequently using that space and it must be used exclusively for business purposes. So that means you can't sit down and watch TV in that space. You can't have dinner at that space. So while it doesn't have to be, I think a lot of people get confused because it says home office. You don't have to have a separate room in your home that is an office. It can be a space. So I live in New York City. I know a lot of people don't have an extra bedroom that they use as a home office, but it can be a tiny corner in a room that's used for other purposes. It's just that space that you're claiming cannot be used for anything else. So you can't claim your space and then also use that for non-business purposes. The second requirement is that it must be your principal place of work. So again, as I mentioned before, it doesn't mean it's your only place of work. You can have multiple office locations. I know, for example, there's accounting, uh, people who own accounting firms where they've got you know five, six, seven different office locations for their business. But if their primary place of work is their home and a, and a space in their home, they can still claim this deduction even if they still go to those other locations. All that matters is that it's your principal place of work. What does that mean? You need to be using it the most frequently. So you wanna be working more time in your home office than other places that you might go to do work. You wanna be making the most critical business decisions or doing the most critical business activities in that space. If you are someone who meets with clients, it's probably a really good idea to make sure that your clients meet you in your home office as opposed to another location. That's not fatal to claiming the deduction if they do, but it's going to be a really bad factor if you've got a home office and you're not meeting clients there. You also want to be conducting business meetings to the extent possible in that home office. You want to be doing the most kind of critical activities on behalf of your business in that space, and you definitely want to be using it the most often. So those are the two requirements for claiming the deduction. It's really simple. Again, don't get caught up that it has to be a separate office space or that it has to be closed off. It's just gotta be a space exclusively used for your business. Also, for some reason, a lot of CPAs have gotten in their head that this is a huge audit risk to, and a red flag to, to claim this on your tax return. So I've encountered a lot of situations where CPAs were telling business owners not to claim it because they thought that might make their tax return more likely to be flagged for audit. That has not been my experience. I've never seen there be an uptick in audit for someone claiming the home office deduction. And so I would never you know, use that as a reason not to claim it. I don't know why that thought is out there. I think it's a myth. Also, this is a very, like the tax code lets you claim this deduction. It's clear that you can claim it if you meet the requirements. So don't be scared from claiming this deduction. I do, I've never seen it you know, in practice that it actually increases your risk of audit. And if you do this right, this can be a very, very large deduction on your tax return. 
So what are the examples of the types of things that we can deduct through our home office deduction? So really what this deduction lets you do is take deductions for expenses that would otherwise be non-deductible personal expenses, like if you think about your property taxes on your personal residence, and claim a tax deduction for a portion of those expenses. So that can be the number one is that, and it's going to be a piece of this. I'll talk to you a little bit about how to calculate the home office deduction. You're not gonna get to deduct your full rent, for example, but you do get to deduct the portion of these expenses that relate to your home office. So if you're someone who rents your space, then you should be able to deduct a piece of your rent. If you're someone who owns your home, then you should be claiming a piece of a depreciation on a piece of your home. And don't, again, don't let your CPA tell you not to claim that depreciation. I see that happen a lot because you do have to recapture it when you sell the home. But don't, don't listen to them because you're actually, even if you don't claim the depreciation, if you take the home office deduction, you're viewed as having to claim it. So you've got to pay that recapture tax even if you claim the depreciation or not. So it would be really bad to, to have to recapture the depreciation in the future and then not have taken the tax deduction in the first place. So take the depreciation deduction on your tax return for the home office deduction if you own your home. Real estate taxes, cable and internet, if you're not deducting that elsewhere, you can deduct a piece of that. Utilities like your water bill, things like that. Cleaning fees, if you pay someone to come clean your home, you can deduct a piece of that because they're also cleaning your home office in connection with that. Supplies, and then a big one is, is mileage and travel costs that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to deduct. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about that with the first trip of the day rule. But now that we know the types of expenses we can deduct, it's important to understand how to calculate the home office deduction. And this is really an easy calculation. It's something that your CPA should be able to do for you. I have a spreadsheet um, on my website that I'll link to where you know it, it, it walks you through and helps you calculate that for you. And you should be doing this every year. You can just fill out that spreadsheet yourself with the expenses and hand that over to your CPA so that they can input that into your tax return. But just in short, there are two methods for calculating the home office deduction. There's a simplified method and a regular method. You never wanna use the simplified method because you're only allowed to deduct basically up to $1,500 a year under this deduction. You should be able to deduct a much higher amount under the regular method. So you always wanna use the regular method if, you know, unless for some reason you just have a, a tiny deduction for some reason. But my spreadsheet that I'll link to, that actually calculates the regular method. I'm not gonna go into it in detail, but basically you need to measure the space that you're using in your home or apartment for you know business purposes and then you take that percentage of square feet that's allocated to your home office as a, you know compared to the total square footage of your home and that's the percentage of these expenses you can deduct so if that's 10 percent of your home is your home office then 10 percent of your rent is going to be a tax deduction under this deduction so check out my spreadsheet to use and help you calculate that make sure you keep copies of receipts you know to support these expenses that you're claiming because again, just like any other business expense, you would be required to provide receipts if you were ever audited on this. So the first trip of the day rule is a really good example of how you can also take expenses that would have otherwise been non-deductible and make those deductible under the home office deduction. So typically you cannot deduct your first trip of the day. So if you don't have a home office and aren't taking this deduction, Let's say you're that accountant example I use where it's an accounting, a person that owns an accounting firm and they have five other locations that they visit very frequently. If they weren't claiming the home office deduction, their first trip of the day to whatever office they go to is not deductible because it's just viewed as your regular commute. Also, if you've got a, you know, a business space that you go to every day and that is your office, that's not deductible because that's just your commute to and from the office and the IRS doesn't let you deduct that. But if your main office is your home office, then that first trip of the day is deductible. So if you did have another office space that you used occasionally, then you could technically deduct mileage or travel costs associated with that. Or if you are that accountant that owns multiple practices in different locations, you can deduct that trip when you go visit your, your various offices. So this can really be a great way to add up expenses that would have otherwise not been deductible. And also, if you're someone who goes to client locations a lot in connection with your business, if you weren't having a home office, you would not be able to deduct that trip to the first client in the morning because, again, that's your regular commute. 
But under the home office deduction, you can deduct that first trip to your client's office because your office is your home. So that is actually a travel cost that is deductible. If you're claiming the home office deduction, watch out for double counting. You're only allowed to deduct an expense one. So if you're someone who takes a tax deduction for your internet cost because you take the position that, you know, you wouldn't need internet in your home unless you were using it for your business, then you can't then take another piece of that internet cost on the home office deduction. So just make sure you're not double counting costs that you've deducted elsewhere on your tax return. The last thing I wanna mention is that if you are an S corporation structure, which is probably most of us that are business owners, then you need to put a special plan in place. Otherwise, you're not gonna get the max benefits under the home office deduction. It's kind of annoying, I know, but it's just an extra kind of admin thing you have to do once in order to claim this deduction and maximize the deduction that you can claim and avoid having to pick up any income when your company reimburses you for, for the home office deduction expenses you incurred. So I'm gonna to talk to you about an S-Corp accountable plan and what that is. For starts, let's think about, so if I have an S-Corp and that's my business and I am claiming the home office deduction because I am claiming a piece of my rent, let's say, you know, I get to, to claim a piece of my rent for my home office that I pay every year. Technically what's happening there is that my business is renting my home office from me to use in connection with the business. So you need to, you know, you need to be reimbursed by your business for that expense because your business is really renting your, that space of your apartment from you. So what you need in, in place in order to avoid having to include that rental income and taxable income and report that every year is an accountable plan. What is an accountable plan? It is basically an expense reimbursement policy that says if employees such as yourself on behalf of the business incur business expenses, then they're eligible to be reimbursed for those expenses. And there it sets out the policy by which the company will reimburse you. So it gets a lot into the details here with the accountable plan. I'm not gonna go through this a lot in detail, but I will link to my download for an accountable plan. I talk a lot about the accountable plan and how to put this in place in my strategy course where it's a tax strategies for business owners course, which I'll link below. You need to understand this accountable plan. It's not something most CPAs really understand or even will tell you about because it really gets kind of the cross between tax and legal here because an accountable plan is really kind of more of a legal document. So unless you're working with a tax attorney, it's unlikely they'll really understand that in detail how to put that together. But if you really wanna understand, you know, more about the home office deduction, how to put that accountable plan in place, what it is and exactly what you need to do as far as maintaining that expense reimbursement policy, then I suggest you check out my course. It is Tax Strategies for Business Owners course. It goes through all the tax strategies that you as a business owner could claim. And it goes into detail in the home office deduction as well as every other you know, tax strategy that could be available to you. So this is an overview of the home office deduction. Again, don't listen to anyone who tells you not to claim this. It's a great deduction that you can claim on your tax return. And if you do this right and maximize it and have the accountable plan in place, you should be looking at a pretty hefty tax deduction every year. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to our channel.